Tonight on Quinnipiac Live. The world of business is complex and ever-changing. Find out how the Quinnipiac School of Business closely tracks what the markets require and how our students are taking advantage of the experiential learning opportunities we offer. Join the conversation. Quinnipiac Live starts now. Welcome to Quinnipiac Live, I'm Joel Vanner. Tonight we have an exciting show planned for you with a variety of guests. Don't forget to put your questions in the comment section below so they can be answered live on air by our guests as well as by our team of Quinnipiac Live students and alumni. And don't forget to like this live stream to be entered into win a special School of Business Bobcat prize pack. One lucky winner will be selected by the end of the show. I'm joined now by Tyler Walsh, a 4 plus 1 management major, and Abby Sang, a 3 plus 1 accounting major. Tyler and Abby, thank you for joining me. Yeah, Thanks. thank you for having us. So let's start off with what led to your decision to choose Quinnipiac in the School of Business. Tyler? Um, for me, Quinnipiac, uh, the size was definitely a plus. It's a perfect medium-sized school, um, and also the distance from home. Being from Mass, it's only a couple hours, so um, I'm able to come and go and still have um, the college environment um, you know, at my fingertips. As far as the School of Business goes, I really wanted a solid business program, um, with Quinnipiac being ranked um, among U.S. News World Report, Princeton Review, and it's also AACSB accredited, which is given to some of the top schools in the nation. Um, it really stuck out to me and was a great reason for choosing it. Abby, what led to your decision to choose Quinnipiac? Um, I picked Quinnipiac mainly for the academics, so I'm in the accelerated master's in accounting program so it's a dual degree program where I get my bachelor's and my master's in four years. So Abby you are one of the first students that has the opportunity to participate in the new master's in accounting program and also right. get your CPA certification. Why don't you tell us what CPA stands for um, and what that certification means to you? So the CPA is the certified public accounting license and you need that pretty much to get a high profile job in the accounting field today and you need 150 graduate credits to get the license and a year of work experience. So Abby, it sounds like your program is very intense. Why don't you talk right. a little bit about what your classes are like? So my classes are challenging but not challenging to a point where I'm locked in my room all day doing homework. So they're really interactive and I think they're enjoyable for me at least because they're very interactive, they bring in current events and we use what we learn and apply them on how we could use a business strategy to solve this problem that's happening. So I think that's really interesting. Don't forget, leave your questions in the comments section below so they can be answered live on air by our guests here as we move into a question from Tori. Tori asks, what student organizations are you a part of? Abby? Oh, I'm in the Asian Student Alliance and I'm not gonna lie, I went there first for food because I heard they had some really good food. So I went there and it ended up being a really good community full of not just Chinese people, but there are Koreans, Japanese, Filipino, there are Indians. It's just very loving and we all have common ground. We all love food, so that's really good too. And I'm also in Accounting Society, and that's a really great networking experience with other firms and such. And I also participate in American Marketing Association, and that's I learn a lot about marketing even though it's not my major, which is really interesting. So before we move to, to Tyler's involvement, maybe just talk a little bit about how have these student organizations um, maybe welcomed you to the Quinnipiac community? Right, so when I first came here, it was intimidating because I don't really know anyone, I don't know the organizations that are here, but they do have the involvement fair, so that's when you start to meet like the head of these clubs and organizations, and they're very welcoming. They make, the, you find common ground with everyone here, so keeps me busy. I made a lot of new friends, which is really nice. Tyler, what are your thoughts on the involvement fair? I know I'm a junior and I still went to the involvement fair mm -hmm. uh, last semester when they had it in the fall, so it's something that students seem to go to no matter what year they are, and you can discover all the different clubs and organizations we have here at Quinnipiac. Um, what's your experience been like at the involvement fair, which is really hyped up, and what mm -hmm. organizations are you a part of? Yeah, the involvement fair for me was critical. Um, not only was it required as one of my classes, which was great, but um, just going, you get to meet different people, you get to meet uh, similar interested people in whatever you're interested in. Um, and like you said, it's, it's packed with students and they really want you to join their club, so it's a great opportunity. 
Um, as far as some organizations I'm involved in, um, I'm in a fraternity. Um, I also was in American Marketing Association as well for a couple years, and I've done um, been involved with the orientation program, which was great, and also um, in SGA, which is our Student Government Association. So it's great to advocate on behalf of students and get that opportunity. And it's been really fulfilling with all the involvement and in part due to the involvement fair. So maybe um, describe to Abby and describe to our, our viewers who are watching live, what are some experiences that you get out of being a member of the American Marketing Association? Um, for being a part of the American Marketing Association, it's a uh, national organization. So we have our chapter, Quinnipiac. Um, specifically, I was part of the professional development um, subsection. And with that, it was really great, especially as a freshman, to jump in. Um, they do resume reviews, different professional um, gear events, and you're taught by um, people in the industry as well as higher students. Um, so you really get a feel right off the bat for what the business world is like, and it gives you an upper edge and all, honestly just something to do on campus which is great. Don't forget to leave your questions in the comments section below so they can be answered live on air by our guests. As we move into a question from Carla, Carla asks, how easy is it to meet people in and outside of your major? So Abby, why don't you uh, talk about how easy it's been so far? Well, I live in a cohort, which is four people in the dual degree program. So my best friends live right across the hall from me. It's actually very nice because we're all in similar classes. We help each other with homeworks. And it's also very easy to meet people that aren't in your major as well because you're going to be put in general education classes that all freshmen have to take. Like first year seminar, I made some really great friends from there who I do have some classes with this semester too, actually. And you're just going to meet people left and right. <laughs> Tyler? Yeah, similarly, um, you know, outside your major, it's really easy to meet, like Abby said, in the residence halls, um, as well as like we talked about involvement, um, going to the different club meetings at night, you never know who's going to be there, and it may be people part of a different major, but it's someone you have a common interest with, so right there, it's someone that you now have a friend or someone to eat lunch with, and how I met uh, a lot of my friends through involvement. My best advice, get involved. Get mm -hmm. involved at Quinnipiac. It's a great decision. Definitely. Well, Tyler and Abby, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. having us. Come visit our campus. There are so many opportunities for you to see the Quinnipiac community for yourself. For more information on upcoming open houses, preview days, admitted students days, and more, visit qu.edu slash students live. Don't miss your opportunity to win a customized Quinnipiac School of Business Bobcat prize pack. Like this video by the end of the live show and we'll select one lucky winner live at the end of the show. I'm joined now by Jenna Braca, an IB major, and Brendan Frank, a marketing major. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So what led you both to take part in the accelerated dual degree programs? Jenna? Um, for myself, when I originally applied to Quinnipiac University and I was invited into the program, I was very nervous about the amount of course load and everything that went along with being in the, in the accelerated program. However, we went to, my parents and I went to a college fair in our town and I talked to an admissions officer and he was really helpful. He answered all of our questions. He really eased my fears and everything that I was nervous about and I decided to do the program and it's been amazing ever since. So Brendan, you and Jenna both have a similar experience <laughs> uh, as to how you got to Quinnipiac. You both met with an admissions counselor. What was that like? It was a really positive experience. Uh, he was the one that actually told me about the 3 plus 1 program. Um, I had never heard of it. I had only heard of uh, five-year accelerated degrees, so it really stood out to me that it was four years and I could get out into the workforce a lot faster. Uh, it was also nice from a cost standpoint. You're only yeah. paying for four years of school instead of five or six. Um, but overall, the experience was really great, and like Jenna said, uh, really encouraged me to do the program and kind of just went for it. Don't forget, leave your questions in the comments section below so they can be answered live on air by our guests as we move into a question from Paul. Paul asks, can you tell me more about the 3 plus 1 accelerated program? Um, yeah, so the 3 plus 1 program is pretty much you do your undergraduate degree in the first three years, and then you graduate at the end of your junior year with your undergraduate degree in one of the business um, concentrations that we have. And then in your fourth year, you, are, you just do your MBA, and you just concentrate on getting your MBA by the end of your fourth year. So you graduate in the normal four years, the traditional four years, with two degrees. So the accelerated dual degree program is off. It's an amazing program, and we've both had an amazing experience being a part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Brennan, what are your thoughts on the dual degree program? Uh, yeah, just like Jenna said, uh, and they also encourage you to get involved in school business clubs yeah. so I think you're required to be a part of one or two uh, which is really great because you can kind of apply the knowledge that you have into the real world and get uh, get a view into into what business is like out there so I think it's a really awesome program I've loved my time in it and uh, 
you know, Jenna has as well. So, how does the do Quinnipiac yeah. School of Business prepare you for your career while you're a student here? Um, so being a student, you take, during your undergraduate degree, you take a class that's called SB250. And in that class, you learn how to write a resume, write a cover letter, create your LinkedIn profile, talk to potential employers, network. Um, and at any point in the week, you can go to the career development office and they'll read over your resume, read over your cover letter, help you find job listings on our Quinnipiac University Career Connections website. So that's really been so helpful and it's such a great tool to have as students here at the university that I know a lot of students take advantage of and it's, it's very, very helpful, especially as a senior looking for potential um, jobs after college. It's been really, really helpful. Brendan, we're going to move into a question from Patty. And Patty asks, what kinds of internships have you done and where? Uh, so last summer, I actually interned for a minor league baseball team uh, called the Rockland Boulders in New York. Uh, and it was a sales internship, but it was a lot more than that. It was a small organization. so. My day-to-day -day activities changed all the time. Uh, I really got to work with a bunch of different departments, whether that be sales or operations or promotions. Uh, so it was really great for me to kind of get a look at what different uh, roles are within organizations. And it was a really great experience. You get really close with your employees, obviously, in a small, small organization, excuse me. Uh, so it was, uh, it was a really rewarding experience, and I definitely learned a lot from it. And I know Jenna has as well from her internships, if she wants to talk about that. Yeah. Jenna? Um, yeah, so during my time at Quinnipiac, I've had three internships, actually. So the summer after my freshman year, I interned in Tianjin, China at Tassley Pharmaceutical Company as a marketing intern. Um, the summer after my sophomore year of college, I interned at TD Bank as a credit analyst intern working with restaurant franchises in Manhattan. And currently, last semester and this semester, I'm interning at the Central European Institute, which is an on-campus student consulting group. So we work with um, startup companies from Central, Euro uh, Central European countries like Hungary and Poland, trying to bring their products into the US. So let's start talking about the abroad opportunities that you both have had. Um, Jenna, let's talk about you had an internship abroad. You started out with saying, tell me more about that. Uh, yeah, so it was amazing. Every year, actually, the School of Business offers this internship to a group of about four students, and you apply. And it's such a great opportunity, I think, for students. As an international business major, I was able to take what I was learning in the classroom and then go abroad and have those cultural experiences that are so invaluable and so much more than just reading out of a textbook. I got to live, work, um, and just kind of like live. <laughs> it was really great in another country, and then bring that back, and I was able to use that throughout the rest of my college experience. Brendan? Yeah, I was uh, lucky enough to do a semester in London, actually, which uh, I did last spring, and it was amazing. Like Jenna said, you're not a tourist, you're living in the city, so you get to really immerse yourself into something new, and it's really exciting, and all the, the courses I took over there were really cool. Uh, I'm a marketing major, as, as you mentioned, and I got to take an advertising class over there, and it's, it's a lot different. There's a lot uh, different rules and regulations that uh, are in place in, in England and across Europe. So it's really cool. You get to experience uh, new cultures and you get to travel. It's not terribly expensive to travel over there. So uh, I am so, so thankful for, for the experience. Yeah. yeah. Lorna asks, can you discuss international business and possible program options? Jenna, this is a perfect question for you. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so the international business program is really, really great. There's so many different classes you can take. Um, you can take anything from international negotiating to international marketing, international marketing research. It's such a great program. Um, the school offers internships abroad, uh, like the one I did in Tianjin, China. And aside from that, they offer, they help you find programs uh, for internships and study abroad in different countries. And with the IB program, international business program, you do um, have to study abroad in a country that's not English speaking. So that's really amazing. You get to immerse yourself in a culture that's completely different from yourself. So it's a really awesome program and I absolutely love my time in it. Yeah. Jenna, besides China, you also studied abroad in Florence and Peru. Why don't you tell us a little bit about those experiences? Yeah, so I studied abroad for a full semester in Florence. Um, it was amazing. I got to take so many classes. I got to take elective classes, which were really fun. So I got to, as a business major, and especially in the dual degree accelerated program, I don't always get to take some fun classes. So while I was abroad, I did all my electives there. So I took an art class, which was so, so fun to you know do art in Italy. <laughs> so that was really cool. Um, and I also did get to take international economics, which was a really cool class. And then this past winter break, I was in Peru for two weeks with the uh, master's program, the MBA program. And that was really cool. We did a bunch of company visits and got to see businesses working internationally. Well, Brendan and Jenna sure have experienced the world size classroom here at Quinnipiac. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Come visit our campus. There are so many opportunities for you to see the Quinnipiac community for yourself.
For more information on upcoming open houses, preview days, admitted students days, and more, visit qu.edu slash students live. And don't miss your opportunity to win a customized Quinnipiac School of Business Bobcat prize pack. Like this video by the end of the live show and we'll select one lucky winner live at the end of the show. And I'm joined now by Naomi Robinson, a computer information systems major, Savannah Riley, an alum from the class of 2016, and she is currently pursuing her MBA here at Quinnipiac, and Professor Bruce Salnier, a computer information systems professor. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank Thanks you for, for having us. us. So Naomi, let's start with you and why you chose Quinnipiac and Computer Information Systems. Yeah, so I chose Quinnipiac because I came in as an athletic training major, but um, somewhere down along the lines I wanted to um, do something with computers, so I decided to switch over to the School of Business, and I've loved it ever since. Everything they have to offer me from the programs that we're able to learn um, to the job opportunities that we have when we graduate, it's just an amazing program. Athletic training to Computer Information Systems sure is a, a huge transition there. It is. How have the faculty at Quinnipiac supported you throughout that transition? So they're there 24-7. Um, you can send them an email, um, talk to them about anything you want. Um, a lot of them have experience in the job fields that most of us would like to go into. So that's a really great resource for most of the students in the School of Business to go to. Job experience in the field that you'd like to go into. Savannah, an alum from the yes. class of 2016, currently getting your MBA here at Quinnipiac. How has Quinnipiac prepared you for the current career you have now? Uh, definitely soft skills. I think that's something that's really overlooked, but that's what you use the most in a lot of jobs. For me, project management, time management, working on different engagements with different people, that's what they've prepared us. The capstone was huge. It was pretty much what I do now, and just working in groups on to accomplish things. Tell us a little bit about the current job you have now and um, how that came about. So. It all started at the career fair. Teachers tell you to go to the career fair, go to the career fair. Just wandered around, talked, and just applied through Quinnipiac. Got an internship, which led to my full-time job, which I'm working at. I do IT risk at Deloitte and Stanford, so evaluating IT systems for fraud and so, Professor Salnier, you see the success that um, Naomi and Savannah have experienced so far. What makes the new facilities in the School of Business beneficial for collaboration and teaching and learning? Well, they're brand new, number one. So all the equipment is fresh and uh, you know not really uh, not really well worn down or anything. So we're dealing we're dealing with state of the art equipment in an environment which really fosters student collaboration. Instead of having the old desks that's now sitting at tables with separate monitors at each table. So I can stand up in front of a group and I can present some information briefly and then we can break off into the project teams and they can be working on stuff at their tables and the tables are really set up for collaboration. And I can float around and be talking to the various teams and helping them over any, any issues they may have in terms of applying what we just covered in class to their project. Savannah, we just heard about the personal experience that professors at Quinnipiac can apply to the students in their classes. Mm -hmm. How did that personalized experience benefit you during your time here at Quinnipiac? Uh, well, for me, a lot of our projects are very creative, so we get the opportunity to work in groups, but then you really do need your teachers. You need to go in for extra hours because they will help you fine tune all the skills, all the computer like projects that you need. So it's really cool because you get to work with your groups for the creative side, but really the teachers come in when it's technical. Naomi? Yeah, so for me, um, there are always opportunities to learn. Um, there are classes that we take, such as coding, which is not easy um, to everyone. So that's when the professors are there to really help you understand complex um, so, um, courses like that. Don't forget, leave your questions in the comment section below so they can be answered live on air by our panel of guests as we move into a question from Pamela. And Pamela asks us, how does Quinnipiac demonstrate its commitment to diversity? So I can start. Um, there are, <laughs> are a lot of diverse um, organizations on campus. I am a part of a couple of those organizations, such as Black Student Union, um, African and Caribbean Union on campus, and they just promote a lot of different opportunities. I'm also on the student programming board, and they have programs um, catered to diversity on this campus, so it really helps. How have you, Naomi, um, this question is, is mainly geared towards you and maybe Savannah can, can touch on it, but the experiences you've gotten outside of the classroom, how did they um, translate to your success in the classroom? Yeah, so um, inside the classroom, um, I can get help from 
different types of people. So like whether it's people in the job field or within the classroom and then I can go to them um, and gain what they have learned in their field experience and then I can take that and learn from them. So Savannah, what were you um, involved in at Quinnipiac? So I played field hockey at Quinnipiac and then I was also part of the SAC, Student Athletic Advisory Committee, which also tries to really bridge the gap between athletes and students and just working in teams really is what's taught me the most that I brought from outside to the school. Naomi, I have here Naturally Me. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on that and tell us what that is? Yes, so Naturally Me is an organization um, created by a couple of my friends and myself. And basically it's an organization used to promote um, different types of ways you can either take care of your hair or to edu and to educate people um, on different types of diversity. So whether it's straight hair, curly hair, wavy hair, how to basically take care of it. Um, and we also do a lot of different things with skin care. So it's not just about natural hair, but it's um, naturally me, how we can use natural skin products and hair products to basically um, be ourselves. We're going to move into a question from Gerald, and Gerald asks, can you talk about some of the success you've experienced in the School of Business? And Professor Solnier, maybe if you want to also answer this question, uh, talk about the success you've seen your students encounter in the School of Business. Well, we're, we happen to be in, in the department that I, I'm a faculty member, Computer Information Systems, in a field in which the, the, the job uh, the company seeking jobs and the number of positions they're seeking exceed the supply of students that are currently graduating, so it's a very hot field. Um, so uh, we have established pipelines with companies that uh, our, our graduates like Savannah was back recruiting students for Deloitte a year after she was already working for Deloitte. So we've got those pipelines established in quite a few different places. The other thing we do is we make an internship a requirement for the students so they must establish themselves inside a company. Um, very successful, and we're not we're not newcomers to this. The long, the short version of the story is they brought me in and a fellow from Yale over four decades ago to start the undergraduate computer program at Quinnipiac. So we've been doing this for a long time. Savannah, Professor Solnier kind of just alluded to it. What is it like being able to return to Quinnipiac and kind of recruit um, fellow Bobcats into uh, Deloitte? It's fun. It's you're so proud, and you want to bring more students over. I was already talking to Naomi, trying to recruit her. <laughs> but it's great because you understand everything that they're going through and you can kind of explain the transition to the real world and you have a lot in common. So we have a question for Savannah. Savannah Carmen asks, how do you student? How do students balance playing a sport and the rigorous academic program? I guess it's out there that you played field hockey <laughs> yeah. during your time here at Quinnipiac. So yeah. how did you um, uh, achieve that sport um, school life balance. Just time management. You learn a lot of that in college. That's one of the biggest lessons you'll learn. <laughs> Taking advantage of the time you have, whether that's on the bus or just a few minutes in between classes, it really adds up. Well, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks for having us. us. Come visit our campus. There are so many opportunities for you to see the Quinnipiac community for yourself. For more information on upcoming open houses, preview days, admitted students days, and more, visit qu.edu slash students live. Before we leave for you, we have drawn a name from all the likes on the video, and our lucky winner of the Bobcat prize pack is Alexa Ferentino. Congratulations, Alexa. That's all the time we have for our show this evening. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on one of our campuses soon.